Shall we all stand for the reading of God's word? Matthew's Gospel, 10th chapter, 8th verse. Matthew's Gospel, 10th chapter, 8th verse. No matter what I've been through, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know who I am. Matthew chapter 10, verse number 8. Matthew's gospel, very easy to find, especially if you have a New Testament. This is the first book. Did you find verse 8? Did you find chapter 10? Let's read together. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely given. I want to focus on those words at the bottom. Freely you have received, freely give. I want to talk to you tonight for the next 40 minutes on what is called the spirit of entitlement. The spirit of entitlement. There are people who feel they are entitled to certain things. You know, this, this is mine. This belongs to me. And I need it. I want to have it. By hook or by crook, I'm going to get it. This is mine. It's not, it's not going to cost me anything. It's just mine. It's called the spirit of entitlement. People who have a spirit of entitlement feel that everything is free. Everything is free. And they would quote Matthew 10 verse number 8. What does Matthew 10 verse 8 say? Freely you have received, freely give. So many, many have this first part of that verse. Freely you have received. So we are of the impression that everything in life is free. Everything in the kingdom is free. And everything in our walk with God is free. For those who think like that, they have what is called the spirit of entitlement. Is the spirit of entitlement a biblical spirit? Are we all entitled to anything and everything that we want in life? Or... Do we have to do something? What is our responsibility? Tonight at the end of the next 40 minutes, light will dawn into your spirit to know exactly your responsibility in terms of what God wants to get through to you. Amen. Amen. I pray that your hearts will be open, your ears will be open, your spirit will be receptive to what you're about to receive. Those in our satellite church also and those around the world, may God bless you as you hear his word and become a user and a doer in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Say the spirit of entitlement. How many of you are your own boss in your company, a CEO of your company, a managing director? Do you have workers under you that, that feel they are entitled to everything? Have you met people like that? Hello. Have you met people like that? There are plenty. There are plenty. They work for you and they feel that they are entitled to a bonus. December is tomorrow. Is it true that December is tomorrow? <laughs> and everyone is bonus conscious. And many feel that they are entitled to it. I'm talking about companies. And then we go in our Christian life thinking like this I am entitled to it I'm entitled to it ladies and gentlemen while everything in our lives that we require for this life Jesus has paid for it all which means it is freely available okay it is freely available but even though it is freely available it is not expedited at no cost. I want you to imagine a bicycle. How many of you have ever had a bicycle in your life? Amen. Remember BMX days? Do they still have BMX? Yeah, they have BMW. <laughs> you know, BMX days, my goodness, I remember riding down uh, Dakshina Rama. Anyway, you don't want to know that story. I thought I was um, street hawk. And there was a, you know, um, 
uh, a hump of old sand. Man, my parents don't know about this. I was, I think, 13 years old. I came. I thought I was a street hawk. I came over that hump. And little did I know. Oh, beloved. That's the day I memorized the scripture. It is finished. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I'm telling you, but for the grace of God. And you see, a bicycle has two wheels. Lord, give them a revelation right now. <laughs> It has two wheels and those two wheels are going to move in any direction you want it to go depending and according, say that word, again, louder, with conviction, annoy your neighbor, that's right, that's when you really said it, say according, according to the peddling. According to the peddling, the wheels will move. Amen. In the same way, Jesus has paid for everything. For us to say that he hasn't and we have to earn it, then salvation is by works. But salvation is not. Salvation is by grace. By grace are ye saved. Amen. So, Everything in the kingdom seems to be free. But in order for it to work, for the wheels to go into motion, if you want the things that Jesus has died to give you happen in a motion, if you want it to move in a motion, then precious people of God, there is a pedal that you need to press. It's not going to happen because you have a spirit of entitlement. It's, it's not going to happen automatically. I am going to ask you a very interesting question. At the end of the ministry of Jesus on this physical planet, he has two very close disciples. Take a guess. Lord, give them a revelation. John and Peter. Very good. Ten marks. Ten marks. Peter and John. Now, imagine what the other ten are thinking. When Jesus from the cross tells John, Behold, this is your mother. Take her. And tells Mary, Behold, this is your son. I'm giving you a son. And son, I'm giving you a mother. The other eleven, Aren't we also entitled to something? Aren't we also supposed to be given something? Why is John being given something and not us? Peter would have excused himself because he betrayed Jesus. Okay? Hello? But don't say yes too soon. Because after Jesus' resurrection, he comes to Peter and tells Peter, Do you love me? Peter says, yes, I want you to take over my church. He gives John his mother and he gives Peter his church. And then to the rest of the ten. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, if God is going to entrust you with things that are close to his heart. He doesn't give everyone everything. He does it according to something. Did you already grasp where I'm going with this? Now do you know why some in the church have what others don't? Oops. You getting what I'm saying? 
it seems as if God has entrusted some people with some stuff that he does not want to entrust others. And the others who don't get entrusted with stuff like Mary was given to John and the church was given to Peter, the sheep were given to Peter, they get very angry and they feel we are entitled to this. God is not partial. How come if he can heal one, let him heal Help me. I said, help me. If he heals one, he can heal another. If he blesses one, he can bless another. But beloved, not so. Not so. Not so. It all happens according. There is a word according. I want to run through a few things and I want to show you how certain things are dependent on other things. Let's look at the first area. The first area is the area of entrusting. Jesus entrusted Mary to John, correct? Jesus entrusted the sheep of his church to Peter. And then nothing much to the other nine or ten or the rest. But something special and significant to Peter and John. How many of us in this congregation and watching us by live stream and in our satellite church have this hunger, Lord, I want you to entrust something big to me. I mean, do you, do you want to be in that line? Lord, I want you to entrust something big to me. It's not just going to happen free of charge. Matthew chapter 25, verse number 15. Let's read. And unto one he gave. Let's read. These are the words of Jesus. He's talking about the parable of the talents. Johnny, I would like you to highlight the word according. According, if you put yellow there, blue, white and yellow seems three good colors for tonight. Put yellow there. According, highlight according with the word, the, uh, the color yellow as soon as possible before Jesus comes. There you go. Now when you come to the word according, Shout it out loud, okay? One, two, go. The talent here is money. Okay? Settle that in your heart. This is money. So he's giving one guy five talents, another guy two, and another guy one. My precious people of God, they were not necessarily free. They were given, thank you, according. The word according in the Greek is the word kata, not spelt with Q. K-A-T-A. It means something that triggers something. It triggers. So when Jesus speaks this parable, he's talking about a man, a Lord who is entrusting talents to people. And he, the entrusting doesn't happen because he likes a man. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here. I like you. You're a burger boy, no? Here, five talents. What are you? Tamil, you get only one here. You think he's like that? No, 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 no. Some of us in Sri Lanka think he's like that. God is not your mother. <laughs> come here, you boy. Come here. What are you, Fernando? No, you only deserve two. Here it goes. <laughs> you think God gives like that? No, he gave it according to. I can't hear you. According to their ability. According to their ability, ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus gave Mary to John, he didn't give John his mother necessarily because John had some extra double degree. No, John was able to look after the mother. Why did Jesus give his sheep to Peter? Because Peter was able to do what Christ was cause calling him to do. 
Beloved, it had nothing to do with faithfulness. It had very little to do with being faithful. It had more to do with ability. Are you able? Do you know I know faithful people who are not able? I know able people who are not faithful. But you must be faithfully able. Thank you. Faithfully able. Do you understand this? He didn't give John Mary. Mom, I want you to go to John. John, this is your mother from today. John, you've been a good boy, you know. You fed me and you put your head always was near my chest. You love me a lot. Here is Mary. No, 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 no. It's all according to ability. Amen. I said amen. amen. Glory to God. You want God to entrust you with some stuff? Prayer will, may not do it. You have to be able. Pastor, 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 I want to sing. Can you sing? <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, 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 I want to preach. Can you preach? The ability has a lot to do with it. Amen. Glory to God. Let's look at a second area. The area of healing. The area of healing. Matthew chapter 9, verse number 27 onwards. Let's read. This is going to be an interesting night. And when Jesus departed thence, let's read. Two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind man, men came to him and Jesus said unto them, listen to what he said, believe ye that I'm able to do this? Yeah, 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 Lord. You are able. You are able. Man, just like the king's revivalist would have said it. Do you believe I'm able to do this? Yes, I'm able. You are able, Lord. You are absolutely able. He's able. He's able. He's more than able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. You're able, God. But then look at the words of Jesus. Then touched he their eyes, saying, You should say that word out very loud. According to your faith, be it unto you. Ladies and gentlemen, I thought healing was free. If healing is free, then they shouldn't have put the word thank you but ladies and gentlemen healing is free <laughs> listen 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 healing is free to say that you have to earn for your healing is to say that jesus hasn't done a good job on the cross your healing is free but to obtain what is free there is a word called according it's free but according to your faith. I pray you get this tonight. Okay, I want to ask you a question. Healing is free. Ladies and gentlemen, faith is also free. Faith, according to Romans 12, verse number 3, came with the gospel. A measure of faith. God gave you free faith. He said, here's faith with the gospel. Here's healing. Jesus has paid for it. You've got, you got healing and you've got faith. Both have come free of charge. They are the two wheels in the bicycle. Are you catching this? But then, according the pedal, you must be responsible to connect the faith with what is being provided. You can't say Jesus has healed me or the healing is free and just do nothing about it. It's free. But what is free doesn't necessarily mean you'll get it. <laughs> okay? Since that went down well, let's go to the next one. Are you catching this? Okay. So healing was according to faith. Faith was free. Healing was free. But we have a responsibility in connecting the two. It doesn't happen automatically it doesn't well pastor what about sovereign moments yes there are sovereign moments but majority of the moments you must understand if you want to be healed you have to do something about it let's look at a third area oh victory how about victory how about victory first timothy chapter 1 verse number 18 says these words and again, when you come to that word, 
according. I want you to annoy your neighbor, okay? One, two, go. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, to the prophecies which went before thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Now, I, when I read this, I realized warfare is good. <laughs> it's called a good warfare. Okay? And Paul is telling Timothy, Timothy, if you want victory in these wrestles and this warfare that you go through, if you want to be victorious in whatever battle you are going through, son Timothy, I charge you, according to the prophecies that have gone before you, through those prophecies, according to the prophecies, get your victory in your warfare. How many of you want victory? Even victory, even though it was free, it is dependent on your ability to remember every prophecy that has been spoken to you about the situation that you are going through today. Are you with me? You win your fight through the prophecy, according to the prophecy. Amen. Can you see the word according? Even victory is dependent on prophecy.